We're going to read the William Bradford biography section. And then we'll go over to the questions. Blow this up a little bit. William Bradford. In his upbringing and his devotion to God, William Bradford typified most of the first settlers of New England. The son of an English farmer, he began to read the Bible seriously at the age of 12. While still a boy, he joined with a group of Puritans for prayer and religious discussion. The act took courage for members of Bradford's family urged against it, and the Puritans in England were often, in Bradford's word, taken and clapped up in prison or had their houses beset and watched night and day. Such hounding by authorities led many Puritans to flee to Holland. Bradford was among them. Uneasy in Holland as well, he and some of the other Puritans decided to come to America. So he was really into this Puritan religion, purifying the religion, trying to live a simple religion. And he and his people escaped to Holland and then to America. Bradford's life in America began tragically, and in this, too, he typified many of the first settlers. With about a hundred of other in English immigrants, Bradford reached Plymouth, Massachusetts in December 1620 aboard the Mayflower, a tiny ship with a cracked beam that barely weathered the crossing. A beam is one of the uh, major uh, wooden uh, pieces that holds the ship together. While the ship stood in Cape Cod Harbor considering where to land, Bradford's wife fell, or jumped, overboard and drowned. Many of those who landed were no luckier. In their first fierce winter ashore in America, about half of them died. And if you've ever been to that part of America and you imagine landing uh, uh, on the sand and seeing the forest there and it's freezing cold and there's no food, it would have been very difficult that first winter. If Bradford's experience was typical, it was also in two ways special. He became the governor of Plymouth and he wrote its history. In their yearly voting, the settlers elected and re-elected him governor some 30 times. In 1930, he wrote down his recollections of the founding of Plymouth and began keeping a record of annual events at the settlement, a practice he continued until 1647. His manuscript, containing about 270 pages, was consulted by other Puritan historians, but it stayed unpublished for 200 years, during which time it somehow made its way back to England. So apparently he became, he came over with them on the Mayflower and became their governor and stayed their governor for years and wrote down what happened and created sort of a journal or a history of what had happened. Bradford's work of Plymouth Plantation, published for the first time in 1856 as History of Plymouth Plantation, is pervaded by an enduring vision of America as a nation dedicated to and sustained by God. The book also relates to some of the best remembered episodes in American history. It describes the Puritans' flight from England to Holland, where Fearing the corruption of their children by foreign customs, they planned their desperate second remove to America. It tells of such trials as the terrible first winter in the hideous and desolate wilderness full of wild beasts and wild men. The Indians themselves appear often in Bradford's history, Samoset and Squanto, who not only tell the pilgrims about the surrounding country, but also do so to the pilgrims' astonishment in English. Okay, so uh, he talks about uh, landing in this, what they called the New World, and the wild men there, which were the Native Americans, or the Native people in the American continent, often called Indians in these, this older writing, because when the people were uh, exploring, they thought that they were finding themselves in India on the other side of the globe. And so the Native Americans became known as Indians to the Europeans. Currently now we often refer to them as Native Americans. Um, I'm sure and someday they'll be even more politically correct terms. Um, all right, the pilgrims about the surrounding country, but okay, the bloody Pequot War climaxed by the killing of about 600 Indian men, women and children during the deliberate burning of their village a fearful sight, Bradford wrote, to
to see them thus frying in the fire and the streams of blood quenching the same. Begun in tragedy, Bradford's life in America closed in disappointment. As his book nears the end of its story of the 25-year effort to settle Plymouth, its tone grows, grows mournful. Having fled a corrupt Europe, the settlers themselves began to commit crimes and live immorally. Having survived the wilderness, war with the Indians, and financial exploitation by profiteers in England, many of the settlers began moving away from Plymouth. To Bradford, the place seemed like an ancient mother grown old and forsaken of her children. So over time, over the 25 years, people began to leave the strictures of the Puritan religion and uh, look for money and uh, look for uh, whatever it is that they wanted to do. In his disappointment, Bradford once again proves typical. He would not be the last American writer to feel that the divinely guided nation had fallen short of its promise. So let's go to the questions. Okay, what did Bradford's 200 pages of original jury journals become? That's his 270 pages that originally was printed as a history, a history book. Where did Bradford and the Puritans flee to from England? You remember they were being persecuted in England and they first went to Holland and then they were worried about uh, their kids being corrupted in Holland, so they eventually came to America, but they first went to Holland. Who was William Bradford? He was on the boat, and he eventually became the, uh, the governor, but he started off as uh, just a regular old person in England. His dad was a farmer, and he was a regular person who studied the, studied the Bible. And what job did Bradford do in Plymouth? They eventually elected him, I think they said 30 times, to be their governor. And what happened before the Mayflower landed? You remember the um, they talked about what happened, uh, life started off in, in despair, like life in America, because for some reason his wife either jumped or fell into the water and drowned. And his final disappointment was that this Puritan way of living, this creation of this new world um, failed because the uh, people that came over with him uh, and started to live a freer life or uh, enjoy themselves or profit and they left behind the plainness of the Puritan religion. And Samoset and Squanto, those were the two named Native Americans that came and uh, were able to speak English and were able to help them um, by telling them what it was like in that area and where things were, and what it was, uh, uh, what wildlife and things like that were available. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully you have all those answers. I'm going to pause the video.